Now let's move on to something else which has troubled myself and Inaya quite a lot. We've had lots so of discussions <laughs> about this and I'm sure it will trouble you too. Uh, transgender children's charity Mermaids have come under fire because an investigation by The Telegraph found that the charity had given out chest flattening devices to young girls against their wishes. And indeed, medical experts have highlighted the dangers of chest binding, saying they can cause problems, including uh, for breastfeeding difficulties and also broken ribs. So this is a very serious uh, thing for any child yeah. to be given. Yeah, so the chest binders, we were just showing some images there on, on the TV. But for those listening to us, chest binders, if you don't know what chest binders are, if a young girl... Uh, has started puberty and she decides she now identifies as a boy and wants to transition to a boy, some charities, this one allegedly, can give them chest binders or they can get it online as well where they essentially wrap this sort of tape or the, this band around their chest so as to flatten their chest so that they can appear to be a boy so that they can essentially flatten their breasts if they're trying to transition. The problem is here, it's without their parents' uh, consent. Um, but this charity says it's aiming to support transgender children and their families, but campaigners have called for regulators to step in and launch an investigation into safeguarding. Yeah, I mean, this question of safeguarding keeps coming up. It does seem that it, we've been throwing it out of the window in recent years because of gender ideology. Well, joining us now is Kelly J. Keane, founder of Standing for Women, a campaign group which specifically focuses on uh, the, the rights of women and making sure that the definition of women is clearly defined. Thank you so much for joining us on the programme, um, Kelly J. I mean, what, what, what do you make of this? I just mentioned the fact that safeguarding issues um, seem to no longer be a priority uh, when it comes to charities, particularly when it comes to working with children. And is this not just yet another example that something that, you know, could actually have long term harmful effects for the development of young girls? is being ignored. Well, you know, with, when it comes to mermaids, uh, their CEO, CEO is Susie Green. And I think it's a stretch to expect any safeguarding from a woman who took her son to Thailand to have him castrated at the age of 16. So they have been propagating this nonsense that a child can be born in the wrong body for a really long time. They're in our schools. Um, they have a lot of power. And uh, it's about time that was really clearly looked at. And all that power was absolutely with, without hesitation taken away from them. I, when I first read about this story, I, it made me think of foot, foot binding or feet binding, which mm. was a practice which used to take um, place in China where um, they would bind little girls' feet really tightly so to make them really small. And it was a status symbol, essentially. It was seen as sort of, if you have really tiny feet, you're more feminine. And it just made me think, we, we consider that barbaric now, uh, or we would, mm. yet the same people who might consider that b barbaric there are people who might say, actually, no, this is binding girls' breasts. This is completely different and we're just being inclusive. How do they square that circle? I don't know, because I suspect they'd be the same about um, female genital mutilation or breast ironing. But obviously that happens to far less progressive uh, people. So we can, we can certainly look down upon those people while celebrating the progressiveness of causing um, abscesses, uh, cracked ribs, breathing difficulties. I mean, I know in schools, uh, there are uh, people trained in schools to basically give kids, give girls a little bit of uh, allowances in PE because they know they can't breathe. I mean, how on earth is anyone upholding this really dangerous practice? And why aren't we thinking, what has happened to our society in which breasts are seen as such a, a fundamental measure of whether or not you're sexualized? Um, it's just, it's a whole big issue that I think we need to be talking about. What are we doing to young women? Uh, what about the porn that's streaming into uh, our teenagers' phones? Uh, what is it that we're doing that means that breasts so men that want to be women they focus on breasts uh women that want to be seen as not women focus on breasts um i think we really have to go back to the drawing board when it comes to what is being a woman in 2022 and it cannot be just on the basis of our mammary glands uh, it has to be that we're full humans and then we can embrace the bodies in which we're born as opposed to try and uh, carve them up um, and spit them out for some sort of notion of 
of misogyny and um, and lip service to something that we refuse to even name. Mm. And also, um, Kelly Jenkins, I mean, do you think that the government is now listening to this? I mean, we, we have had, uh, for example, uh, Kemi Badenoch, when she was running, talking about the trans issue, and, and Liz Truss did make some, some words about the definition of women in the run-up to her campaign. Um, but do you really feel like um, this government is, is one that's going to take these issues seriously? I think um, that would be measured in whether or not we remove this immediately from schools um, and whether we have a really good campaign on safeguarding for our children when it comes to being online. Uh, we know that there are some really quite horrible men um, who go through all the social media sites that are occupied by young people in order to uh, gaslight them, groom them into this particular cult. So until we see an absolute end to this stuff being peddled in schools, I don't think we can take this government very seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, look, thank you so much for joining us to talk about this. It's always a pleasure to have you on, Kelly J. Kimer. She's founder of Standing for Women. Um, and now, um, Mermaid's obviously not here to defend themselves, but they have released a statement on their website in response to this Telegraph article. Um, they say, mermaids, mermaids takes a harm reduction position with the understanding that providing a young person with a binder and comprehensive safety guidelines from an ex experienced member of staff is preferable to the likely alternative of unsafe practices and or continued gender um, dysphoria. The risk is considering is considered by mermaid staff within the context of our safeguarding framework. So, oh, wow, well, that, that, that is their statement. But, you know, I do worry that it does veer on the side of uh, emotional blackmail that, you know, if we don't um, follow this yeah. particular path that the alternative is, you know, these kids are going to experience this, that and the other. And I don't think that's a very um, balanced and level-headed way of approaching these issues.